In this learning objective, we'll discuss how to apply activity-based costing for a manufacturer. ABC does not replace an existing job order or process cost system. As I just illustrated in the previous learning objective, ABC assigns overhead into various cost pools in an effort to provide more accurate cost information. So ABC supplements rather than replaces these cost systems. In this learning objective, we'll compare activity-based costing with traditional costing. Let's return to our Atlas company example and calculate unit cost under activity-based costing. We'll need to follow the following four steps. Activity-based costing starts with an analysis of the activities needed to manufacture a product or perform a service. This analysis identifies the resource-consuming activities. Atlas Company identified five activity cost pools, manufacturing, setups, purchase ordering, product development, and property and plant. After we identified the activity cost pools, we must assign overhead cost to the appropriate cost pool. Atlas will assign to the setups activity cost pool all overhead cost directly associated with machine setups. So the cost of resources that are consumed when setting up machines for specific jobs or products, such as the salaries of those employees who perform the setups, as well as any supplies or indirect materials that are needed during the setup. In this example, you can see that they've allocated $100,000 to the setup's activity cost pool. Atlas assigns the total manufacturing overhead of $900,000 to the five cost pools as noted on this slide. It is really important to note that total manufacturing overhead is the same whether you're using a traditional or activity-based costing system. After costs are assigned to the activity cost pools, the company must identify a cost driver that has a strong correlation to the cost accumulated in each cost pool. The term cost driver is used to refer to an activity measure. The activity measure selected should drive the cost being allocated. To achieve accurate costing, a strong correlation must exist between the cost driver and the actual consumption of the overhead cost in the cost pool. So let's take a look at the cost drivers that Atlas Company identified. For the manufacturing cost pool, the cost driver was machine hours. For setup, it's the number of setups. For the purchase ordering cost pool, it was the number of purchase orders. For product development, the number of products developed, and finally for property and plant, the cost driver is square footage. They also provided their total expected use per activity cost pool. In step three, the company computes an activity-based overhead rate for each cost pool by dividing the estimated overhead per activity by the number of cost drivers expected to be used per activity. Atlas computes its activity-based overhead rates by using the estimated overhead per activity cost pool, which is column B, and we're gonna divide by the expected use of cost drivers per activity, which is column D, to arrive at activity-based overhead rates, which is in column F. And what I like to do is I like to think of these activity-based overhead rates as being very similar to the predetermined overhead rate. So what, what I like to think of is you're gonna calculate a predetermined overhead rate for each cost pool. And again, we don't call it a predetermined overhead rate, but rather the terminology is activity-based overhead rate. In step four, we simply allocate overhead cost to products. The company must know the expected use of cost drivers for each product. Because of its low volume and high number of components, the app coaster requires more setups and purchase orders than the app bench. This slide shows the expected use of cost drivers for both the app bench and coaster. To allocate overhead cost to each product, Atlas multiplies the activity-based overhead rates, which were determined in step three, by the number of cost drivers expected to be used per product. All right, so let's look at the manufacturing activity cost pool. 
and we determined an activity-based overhead rate of $10. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that rate and we're simply going to multiply that by the expected use of cost drivers per product. So we're going to take $10 and multiply that by $30,000 for the ab bench, but we're going to actually multiply that by $20,000 for the ab coaster. All right, let's go down to setups. Again, a similar exercise. We're going to have, we have an activity-based uh, overhead rate of $50, and we're going to multiply that by the expected use of the cost driver per product. So for the ab bench, you're going to multiply that by 500, whereas for the ab coaster, we're going to multiply 50 by 1,500. All right, so if we take a look at the ab bench, and again, we're going to take the expected use of cost driver per the product and simply multiply that by the activity-based overhead rates. And when we do that, you can see that the total costs that are allocated to the ab bench are $460,000. They expect to produce 25,000 units, so the overhead cost per unit is $18.40. Let's calculate the overhead cost that we need to allocate to the ab coaster. Again, it's a very similar calculation in that we're going to take the expected use of cost drivers per the product, and we're simply going to multiply by the activity-based overhead rate. And if we add up all the overhead costs allocated to the ab coaster, it totals $440,000. We expect to produce 5,000 units, so the overhead cost per unit is $88. Under ABC, the overhead cost per unit is $18.40 for the AB bench and $88 for the AB coaster. This amount differs substantially from the amounts calculated using a traditional costing system. This comparison shows that the unit costs under traditional costing are different and often misleading. Traditional costing overstated the cost of producing the ab bench by $11.60 per unit and understates the cost of producing the ab coaster by $58 per unit. These differences are attributed to how Atlas allocated manufacturing overhead. In the traditional costing system, each product was allocated the same amount of overhead, or $30, because both products used the same amount of the cost driver, which was direct labor hours. Activity-based costing allocates overhead to products based on multiple cost drivers. Since ABC uses multiple cost drivers, it allocates overhead cost in a more accurate manner. ABC helps Atlas avoid some negative consequences of a traditional costing system, such as overpricing its ab benches and most likely losing market share to competitors. Atlas has also been sacrificing profitability by underpricing the ab coaster. One more thing I want to mention is that activity-based costing does not change the amount of overhead cost. Under both traditional costing and ABC, Atlas spends the same amount of overhead, $900,000. It's just how that overhead gets allocated to the products is very different. Before we take a look at some problems, I'd like to mention one more thing. Companies that move from traditional costing to ABC often have a similar experience as ABC shifts costs from high volume products to low volume products. This shift occurs because low-volume products are often more customized and require more special handling. Alright, for this exercise, Part A is going to have you calculate the overhead rate using the traditional approach. Again, you know the overhead costs are $342,000. You also know that they're going to use direct labor cost as their activity base. And you're also given your total direct labor cost, again, $180,000. The second part to this is you're going to calculate the overhead rates using an activity-based costing approach. All right, they have two cost pools. They have a machine and a set of cost pools, and you're also given the cost drivers as well as the expected use. Right? And then the last part is you're simply going to determine the difference in allocation between the two approaches. The solutions to this problem or this exercise will be provided in the next video. This exercise is very similar to the one you just completed. Again, this is going to give you practice on determining 
the amount of, of overhead allocated using the traditional approach, as well as the ABC approach. And just like the previous exercise, the solutions to this one will be provided in the next video. This is the last exercise for this learning objective, and just like the two previous exercises, the solutions to this one will be provided in the next video.